Hello guys, welcome to Fire Racer Workshop and in today's video we are going to be performing an experiment in ORCAD. So we are going to be simulating that experiment using T-Spice and the aim of the experiment is to find out the reverse characteristics of a Zener diode. So essentially we are going to reverse bias a Zener diode and find out the voltage and current across the diode. So we are going to be using this particular software that is the ORCAD software to perform this experiment. Now this experiment can be performed on Tinkercad. Anyways, we are going to perform it on ORCAD. So let's just KDS this experiment aka kill dead slaughter so first of all this is how our circuit is gonna look like and this is how we this is the these are the results that we will obtain after performing the simulation so let's get started first of all we're gonna open the software so it's showing us multiple software that we can open so we're gonna select orcat pcb designer professional wp spice and we're gonna hit ok it's gonna take some time to load up the software we are going to be greeted with a startup page. Let's just wait for some time. So, you can see the startup page has just popped up. And now, what you're going to do is go to files and select new and project. So, we are going to select this thing analog or mixed 80 please select this thing otherwise you won't get an option to simulate your project so next we're gonna name the project as Xena Xena underscore diode underscore trial so you can just name your project uh, whatever you want so and you're just gonna select the location on which in which you want your project to be saved so for my uh, for my case i'm just saving it in a folder that i created for this particular software so i'm going to save it to that location so i'm just going to hit ok create a blank project and hit ok so now it's going to create a blank project for us and if you have not watched my video that i did earlier for the experiment on pn junction diode the forward bias characteristics of a pn junction diode so click on the pop-up i button so you can watch that video because in that video i just covered a lot of basics and in this video i'm not going to cover all the basics so let's just get started with this experiment so first of all the diode that we are going to be using is so let's just import all the parts that we need so we're going to click on places parts and then we want the diode d1 n750 so this particular diode is a Zener diode and it has let me just show you this data the data sheet of this diode first so again after just like dragging the part to here and clicking it on the screen so we're gonna press escape to get rid of the part so let me just show you the data sheet of this particular diode so this is the data sheet for the diode and it is a whole series of diode which includes these things so these are multiple diodes which are designed by a single manufacturer so the data sheet is provided in a combined format so you can see over here this diode can handle a maximum uh, current so this can dissipate a maximum power of 500 milliwatt so this is important to know and our diode for in our case we are using the IN750 so this diode we are going to be using so over here you can see that the, this diode enters the reverse bias condition at 4.7 volts so it just like maintains the voltage at 4.7 volts constantly so this is the breakdown of the diode and the 4.7 volts so this diode was tested at the Zener current test was done at around like 20 milliampere and the maximum current that the diode can handle is 75 milliampere so 75 milliampere is the maximum current that this diode can handle so according to it we are going to set the parameters in our ORCAD so we have to just keep it in mind that it's 4.7 volts so what we are going to do is just take the power supply to be around 6 volts so we'll just get a really good result and we want the current to be like near 20 milliampere so that we just get a good characteristics curve anyways so after seeing the data sheet so you can also download the data sheet it's linked in the description below so let me just import the other parts that we are going to be need uh, we're going to require for this project so next just import the power supply so that's VDC you just type in VDC and you can see over here it's just popped up so double click on this so over here this is the voltage source that we're gonna be using let's just drop it in escape then we are gonna require a resistor R so you're gonna pick up R analog so there you go and now let's just arrange this component so our circuit looks a bit sexier I should not have said that. Hmm. 
So the orientation of the diode has been set correctly. Let's just hook up everything. I'm just gonna zoom into the screen so you people can see it better. So over here you can see there's the positive terminal of a power supply. So we want this diode to enter the reverse bias. So we're gonna orient the diode in this particular direction. So let's just hook up everything. So first of all, I'm just gonna connect the resistor to the power supply, then this resistor to the diode, then this power supply to this diode. And there you go, our circuit has been complete. So this is hell easy to make. So this is the easiest circuit that you can just like make on your own in this particular software. Now let's just import the ground. Again, you have to just click on this symbol. I hope you can see my cursor. So just click on this symbol and you have to just press on zero, C-A-P, S-Y-M. Double click on it. It will just import a ground. So let's just place it over here. So this is automatically connected to the circuit. Let's just import a voltage point that we are gonna be like taking in our circuit. So let's just type in VCC. The full form of VCC is voltage at common collector, VCC. So we're gonna take VCC CAPSM and we're gonna place it here. So this will show us, so indirectly, we, uh, it means that this voltage, the voltage over here is taken as zero volts. And then if we measure the voltage over here, this is gonna give us the voltage across the diode. And this is what we are gonna need for the simulation. So we're just gonna name this VD. So I've just double clicked on the name tag of this particular voltage reference. So I'm just gonna name it VD. And then we are going to change the resistor value, edit properties, and we are going to change it to 100 ohms. So again, if you don't know how to change the resistor value, etc., I've just covered this a bit in depth in my first video. So make sure that you watch it first before going on with this video. So of course, you can just like click on this and then just go to edit properties. So this is how you can just change the value of each and everything. Now we're going to change the value of the voltage source as well. So we are going to click on the name the name thing over here. So this is what we are gonna click on. You don't have to click on the whole power supply, otherwise it will like open a new tab. So it's better if you just edit the properties of this thing. It's just much more easier to do. So we are gonna take the voltage to be around six volts. So I have run some simulation on this particular diode and I've just found out, I've just found out that the resistor should be 100 ohms and the voltage source should be six volts DC. So th this will just lend us like really good results. And this is how we're gonna assemble our circuit. So our circuit has been fully assembled. You can just take a screenshot of this thing if you want to take it. So anyway, so let's just create a simulation profile. So we're gonna go on PSPICE and new simulation profile we are gonna create. So let's just name this simulation profile as Xeno. Xeno underscore diode in action. In underscore A-C-T-I-O-N action. So you just don't need to change anything else. Just click on create. Now you can see a window has just popped up over here. So this is the simulation like this, these are the simulation settings. So I'm just gonna cross it out. I'm gonna show you how to open this simulation profile. So you over here you can just click this um, option over here. So this will just like take you back to this page. So on the analysis type, on the analysis tab, and on the analysis type, you're just gonna change it to DC sweep. And then we want it on the linear option. And the starting value should be zero volts. End value should be six volts. And the increment is gonna be 0 0.1 volts because it's just gonna give you a much more precise value. So just take it as 0 0.1 volts instead of 0 0.5 volts. In our college, we were told to take the voltage to be like, the increment to be 0 0.5 volts, but take it as 0 0.1 volts. It will just lend you a much more precise result. And of course, it's just your software. You can just do a bit of extra work. It does not complain. So we're just gonna click on apply. Oh, sorry. We just forgot to mention the name of the voltage source. So we're gonna name it V1. So this is the voltage source that we want the voltage to sweep. So we will be like, so this is the voltage source that we have set the parameters for. Now we are gonna click on apply and okay. So let's just simulate this circuit. Now we're gonna click on run simulation and it's just gonna run the simulation. And over here you can see the simulation results are ready. So we're just gonna open this thing. Now over here you can see this is on the X axis. Right now we are having the voltage that is for our power source. So we are gonna change it to the voltage across the diode. So we are gonna go to plot, axis settings. And in the X axis, we are just gonna go to add variable. And we're gonna remove this V1, VV1. And what we're gonna do is like, remove all the extra stuff. 
that we don't need we just need this v vd so this is the thing that we, we uh, that we need so vvd is the reference that we took so this is the vvd the voltage at vd so at this point the voltage is going to be measured so just click on it now over here you can see the trace expression has been changed and now press enter okay i mean so now we're gonna again press okay now you can see the scale has been changed now we're gonna go to trace add a trace and now again just remove all the extra stuff now over here we need the current across the diode so we're gonna click on id1 so that's the current across the diode so over here you can see current across the diode has been selected now let's just click on okay so you can see our beautiful characteristics curve of the reverse bias of our zener diode has been obtained so where you can see uh when the voltage has reached 4.8 volts the current just rise sharply and we are gonna get uh we're getting a maximum current of around 13 milliampere so this graph is just looking really great and to obtain this graph in the third quadrant what we are gonna do is we're gonna go to plot axis settings add variable and in this variable what we're gonna type is we're just gonna add a minus sign to it so it's just gonna shift the axis to negative direction hit ok hit ok now you see our axis like our graph is being obtained in the third quadrant and you can see how precise this graph looks so over here is the breakdown point of the diode so over here the breakdown voltage so it's just like the voltage is gonna stay constant at this particular point because it's a zener diode and the current is gonna increase heavily after it reaches the zener breakdown voltage so the graph is just looking beautiful now what you're gonna do is now if you want to just like change the trace properties so let's just go to properties and what we're gonna do is increase the width if you just want a greater width and to see your graph more clearly now you can just take a screenshot of this thing if you want to remove all the grids etc from this thing what you will do is you're gonna go to access settings then go to x grid so we're just gonna click on none over here for the grid and click on none over here for the grid and similarly we are just gonna perform we're gonna do the similar thing for the y grid as well just click on none and we are gonna click on okay now you see our uh, our grid has been disappeared like our grid has vanished so however i just like the grid to be there in the circuit because it's just like makes it easier to read the graph and if you want to copy all these readings that we just obtained then you're just gonna click uh, right click on your characteristics curve so what you're gonna do is right click on this thing and then we're gonna click on copy to clipboard so you have to click on the graph itself don't click on this thing okay so you're gonna click on the graph itself and then copy to clipboard and i don't know how this lines got activated just now anyways so what we're gonna do is open up ms axel so blank document so let's just paste it you can see over here all the readings have been obtained so these are all the readings that we have obtained so this is into 10 raised to the power minus 17 so because it was just measuring in microamps so obviously the current is just like really small so therefore it's just like in the 10 raised to the power minus 7 range now all the readings have been obtained so anyways i just wanted to show you how to like how you can just like save the readings so this is all guys so this experiment is just hell easy to perform and anyone can perform this experiment so again if you want to like change the change the resistance value in your circuit for example like in the college when we did this experiment we did it at 1k but that is just like complete nonsense i guess because i don't think that at 1k you are going to obtain a really good characteristics curve because the diode according to the data sheet itself the diode has been tested at 20 milliamperes and the diode can handle a maximum current of 75 milliampere so obviously we are well within the range of the zener diode and this is a half a watt zener diode and i also showed you how this diode looks like in real life so i have a 0.25 watt zener diode just laying around in my workshop so i just showed you that anyways guys so thanks for watching this video again if you want to change the resistance value but you can just do it very easily Let's just do it at 1k perform the simulation again simulation has been performed so let's go to plot access settings add variable vd and we're gonna do it as minus vd because we want the graph to be in the third quadrant okay trace add trace id1 okay 
So this is how the graph looks like if we take the value of the resistor to be 1K. The problem with this graph is that it does not show us the whole story because the graph just ends at around 1.5 milliampere. So this graph is like, this graph does not look that pretty as our previous graph was looking like. So that's all guys, this, this is all what I wanted to discuss, but please follow the previous graph. So thanks for watching guys.